So uh, welcome here uh, at a webinar uh, about the things industries and today we're going to talk about uh, agriculture and Internet of Things and uh, uh, with, a, with us is uh, uh, Peter Vogels from uh, Movement and they have built a uh, very exciting use case uh, around uh, uh, tracking cattle. Uh, and then uh, without any further ado, uh, 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 tell us uh, uh, about movement and, and your solution. And, uh, and thanks for, for being here, uh, Peter. Thank you, Vinke. Thank you very much. And uh, I really appreciate it that I can be a part of this webinar. And uh, yeah, uh, TTI has been a partner from the start. Or yeah, TTN, but we use uh, the things industries. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk today about uh, movement, the, as you can see, the GPS cattle tracking solution for an efficient operation. So what I'm going to uh, talk about is, yeah, how did we start, uh, what is actually the solution, and what can we do with it. So uh, that's, um, that's in short what we're going to talk about. So. Uh, first of all, yeah, what is movement? We uh, developed a GPS ear tag, uh, a tracking solution, so we can uh, monitor cattle uh, over yeah, great distances. And I will go into that uh, more later. So how did we start actually? So uh, about uh, three years ago, uh, movement uh, was founded with uh, three others as an uh, uh, yeah, within the Rao Bank, uh, we won an innovation uh, uh, project, and we uh, sort of uh, from that innovation project, we wanted to track and trace cattle over long di distances, so we could use uh, cows as assets, so we could, um, yeah, sort of uh, have those assets and then finance the farmers because in many countries you don't have land titles. And so uh, we couldn't validate the uh, financing part, but what we could validate was the um, tracking part. So a lot of farmers, they wanted to track and trace their cattle. So what we did, we uh, developed a uh, prototype and that uh, what we did together with uh, the Things Network and uh, Sodak uh, in our partner in uh, Hilversum, the Netherlands. And with those prototypes, we went to Australia and basically we started to track and trace uh, uh, cattle. Uh, what we found out is that the farmers don't want colors, but they want ear tags. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, um, to make it short, uh, it took us a long time to uh, develop the ear tag, but since uh, beginning this year, we have been commercial. We are based in uh, Brisbane, Australia. That's uh, where a large part of the team is and Utrecht, the Netherlands. We are fully commercial in Australia and now also expanding to other parts in uh, the world. So why do uh, cattle producers want uh, our ear tech? Basically, it gives them a peace of mind. What we see is that there are many, many instances um, where a cattle farmer relies on subjective data. So no, no objective. Every day they uh, face the issues like, where are my cattle? If they're in trouble, if they jump the fence, hey, and, uh, if they're in a different pa uh, paddock, if the fences are broken. Hey, because you, you need to imagine that uh, beef cattle, they uh, roam around in many parts of the world, they roam around in farms, uh, yeah, bigger than um, the size of 20,000 football fields and then they have a thousand head of cattle. So one cow per yeah, 10 to 20 football fields yeah, or hectares, but I uh, often just uh, make it simple to say football fields. Yeah, and they also don't know like, hey, uh, yeah, if my, the bull is performing and that's what we all can do with the, the GPS ear tag. So how does the technology work? Okay, and this is where also the things industries come in. So we have the ear tag. Uh, about every two hours, we get a the GPS coordinates from the satellites. Uh, they're coming to the ear tag. From the ear tag, then uh, we the GPS coordinates are being sent over the 
things industries network to the LoRa gateway, and then the LoRa gateway sends it up to the cloud uh, onto our devices. So we developed a whole software platform, an app, and also the web platform, so for the farmers to uh, manage uh, their herd. So what's inside the GPS uh, ear tag? We have the GPS chip, the LoRa antenna, the QR code, which is for easy onboarding because um, every cow has a unique code, and a solar panel. So we charge the, the ear tag. In this picture, we have a dual prong, but uh, at this moment it's um, yeah single uh, prong ear tag. So how do we determine uh, the coverage uh, for a farmer? So first of all, we uh, explain the solution to the cattle producer because for him it's uh, all new as well. And then we uh, basically say the ear tag works in line of sight with the antenna. So please give us uh, the best coordinates on your property, what you think, and then we make a radio mapping. And here you can see two examples of a radio map and then you, the black spots, that's where we don't have really good coverage. And then it's up to the cattle producer to decide of where he wa um, yeah, if it's useful for him or not. So how can we use this technology? Um, yeah, your whole operation in one view. Here you can see that uh, they have all their paddocks and uh, the whole farm. They can see where the cow is. They don't have to count their cattle. They're all uh, in the paddock. Um, every dot uh, is a cow, a bull, or a calf, or, um, or a steer. Um, they can see if they're uh, out of the fence. Uh, yeah, and uh, we can also, um, yeah, it, for a farmer, this is already uh, yeah, a huge, huge uh, save, uh, saving to him. What we can also do is grazing patterns. Uh, imagine that a lot of these properties are very big, even the paddocks in itself are very big. And then uh, there are different grass types within that paddock. So the farmer would like to know how is his herd behaving in the paddock. In the left top corner, you can see the whole operate uh, the whole farm, um, and then on the right top corner, you see a zoomed in version of one of the paddocks. You can see where they have been grazing. On the left uh, bottom, that's uh, another paddock, and then you can see that the cows were roaming the fence. Uh, when we showed the farmer this, then he said, "Yeah, that's um, basically he said I need to move the cattle because uh, yeah they are looking for." Uh, greener pasture somewhere else. So he moved them to another paddock. So these are very useful insights also to, to, uh, to determine if uh, he needs to split up his uh, paddocks and to make his operation more efficient. What we also do is bull performance. And uh, bull performance based on, um, on the GPS uh, data and later on also play on uh, accelerometer data. So uh, with the GPS data, we can determine on how many uh, yeah, we assume on how many kilometers it has walked during the day. And we also uh, match that with the temperature because uh, in a lot of uh, cattle producers, they want that their bull is performing also during the day. So it's, it can handle under heat stress. And a uh, bull is very expensive. So it, uh, hey, it's between uh, 5,000 US dollars and uh, 100,000 US dollars. So uh, it's, it needs to perform, and there's about one bull per yeah, 30 to 40 uh, head of cows. So they want to see if uh, the bull is working because they want to um, get new cows on the ground. You can see the, uh, the performance between the bulls. It, it doesn't, it's still, you know, like it's a picture, it's a snapshot, but it gives an indication uh, to the farmer. It's not only ear tags what we do, because if we have a LoRa network on the, on the property, then we can add other sensors as well. And that's what we did. So we added water sensors. And especially in large properties, uh, there, uh, a cattle producer, he checks the water because that's the, mo uh, the most important thing that needs to be there. He checks the water twice a week. And just to check, of course, he drives around and checks on his cattle and the pastures, but basically he drives to a water point to see if there is still water in there. And uh, yeah, with uh, the 
the water monitoring solutions, he basically can skip one water run per week because with the other water run, he still wants to check up uh, on his cows as well. So that saves a huge amount of time and uh, money uh, for uh, the fuel because sometimes they need to drive one hour, well, half an hour to one hour to just one way to a water point. So in here, you can see what we have in our app. You see the, and receive the alerts when it runs below a certain threshold, um, the water levels every 15 minutes. And yeah, we have a, it can last for um, yeah, up to 10 years. And yeah, so we developed the ear tag for uh, cattle and that's uh, predominantly what we still do, but we get a lot of requests from wildlife and um, also sheep actually, but uh, we already tagged some other animals than cattle. Here you can see we are uh, part of a project with the University of Queensland where we track uh, koalas. So um, they use our ear tag and our platform and uh, the, the app to track koalas to see what their behavior is so they can better protect them uh, in the future and also yeah, do more research because there's a, still a lot of unknowns about the koala. Not only koalas, but it's also uh, bison uh, that we uh, tag. And this is in uh, Montana, it's the Smithsonian Institute. And uh, here we uh, sort of, uh, they do research about the grazing patterns in Montana and about the uh, the sheer size that actually they need and also that they can coexist with the, the cattle producers over there with the cattle so it's very important research as well and uh, yeah we have also been in uh, touch now with uh, some uh, yeah some uh, uh, in Kenya uh, to track also wildlife over there and in South Africa so where do we stand now? Uh, so yeah, uh, commercial since early 2020, we have uh, lots of tags in the field. We're uh, selling uh, now in Australia, South Africa, South America, and the United States. And uh, also we have uh, some clients in Europe. Uh, continuous production, uh, increasing numbers, uh, continuous hardware and software development, including with uh, the things industries or, uh, yeah, we, they have been huge help to us and uh, they, they help us where, uh, where needed. As I said, starting to roll out in uh, the other parts in the world. Uh, and yeah, of, um, we're also uh, uh, continuously looking for uh, new investors. At this moment, our team consists of uh, around 11 people based in Brisbane and Utrecht. And as you see, the international, uh, we have international partners, uh, uh, Sodak, the Think Industries, the Meat Livestock uh, Australia, and in the US, and University of Queensland. So that's that's uh, about it. That's uh, movement. I hope you en uh, enjoyed uh, the presentation, and also want to thank uh, Wink again for uh, this opportunity. If you have any questions, uh, yeah, uh, please free, uh, feel free to ask. Maybe Wink uh, has already uh, has already some. So, so yeah, super interesting story. So now I learned about. Uh, uh, bull performance and uh, grazing patterns and and and. What I'm, what I'm curious, like, like, how much of what you're now measuring did you know you wanted to manage when you started, and and how much of it was a learning experience on a, while you did it? Yeah, it, it, like, um, you sort of have have a thing in mind, like, uh, you know, like uh, you wanted to have the GPS coordinates and then see where the cows are. I have a bit of a, I have a, I have a farming background myself, so, and then. It sounds all so easy because you have your phone and you have your GPS and you think you wanted to you want want to make all of that as well in an ear tag and then you realize that a lot of things is just not possible. <laughs> so in my head it's basically I can do much more with the data than we have um, at the moment, but we already uh, giving very valuable data to the farmer. So. Yeah, like like the grazing patterns. That's a, that's a thing, or you know, like a peace of mind. Very basic things you don't think of in the beginning, but that's what farmers tell you. What what's really important as well. All right, very interesting. So, uh, and 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 what I also think was was very interesting is that once you have this like killer app uh, that you're you're having right now with the uh, tracking, um, 
uh, and then you're doing these additional use cases as well. Like, does this, do, do, do these requirements then come from this end customer, or did you um, did you need to push them? Because I I, I can't imagine it's, it 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 sounds so obvious, right? To then yeah. get on to the next one. How did that go? How did that emerge? Yeah, it's it's push and pull. Uh, uh, pushing means like push the product into the market, uh, get uh, get as known out there. Pull is uh, yeah, it's I mean. Uh, yeah, farmers give us really feedback, you know, like, uh, this is what I need, this is what I need, you know, an anti-theft uh, alert is really what is needed in many parts in the world, less so in Australia, but still uh, even there. So it's, we get a lot of feedback, but all, and, and the funny thing is like, we, you know, of course we develop this for cattle, but then, yeah, we get also these requests from the, the wildlife institutions because they have been working with expensive collars and now suddenly there's a, yeah, something cheaper for them, and they can uh, certainly track uh, much more animals and uh, do and expand their research. Yeah, uh, su uh, super, super interesting. Hey, um, I want to leave it at that. Uh, anybody can ask questions in the in the comment below, uh, and um, um, and. Um, uh, and then uh, Peter will be happy to, to answer them. So for now, I want to thank you very much for your time and for explaining this very, very cool use case. Uh, and then um, I want to leave it with this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Vinke. I really appreciate it.